Look at that. Fantastic. This stuff looks awesome. Good morning. You guys want to run, learn how to run the sprayer today? Because that's what we're doing this morning. We're going to spray some quadris on some of our corn, our early application. I'll talk about that application here in a little bit. But uh, first thing we need to do is put a little bit of water in the sprayer. And uh, we're going to unfold the boom out here in the driveway and flip the nozzles to get the right nozzle um, for fungicide and make sure none of them are plugged and everything is working right. So I'm just putting in about uh, 100 gallons of water, so just enough to check everything. So our uh, sprayer here, we have these uh, five-way nozzle bodies. And so I'm just going through and clicking them to the right nozzle. Um, these brown, I think those are an AI tip that Dad was using for spraying his insecticide on the wheat. And we want these twin jet uh, nozzles that will spray forward and backward to help coat the plant better in uh, this fungicide. The, the goal here is plant coverage and, and to uh, coat it as much as possible. So we're going to flip these all and then we'll turn the sections on one at a time to uh, see if uh, there's any of them are plugged or anything like that. When it becomes my job to spray f mostly or more than dad does now, first thing I'm going to do is fix all these dang nozzles. He's got different colored caps. They're on different spots. Some of them you turn one way, this one turn the other way. Nothing is consistent here. These should all be identical so that it's, it's, yeah, it's too easy to make a mistake here. Well, they look good so far here. You can see how they spray forward and backward. That's what the twin jet. Oh, this one here's got one plug. Okay, looks good. That is just water, I promise. Okay, my nozzles are checked, cleaned, put back on, checked again, hold it up, we're good to go there. Time to load the sprayer. So we're gonna put a full tank of water in there, 1,200 gallons, maybe even a little bit more if we can squeeze it in. And then we're gonna put in five gallons of our uh, Quadra. This is the fungicide that we're using. This is a pretty old fungicide actually. Uh, and the reason we're using it is because it is super cheap. Um, we have a pallet of uh, better fungicide in the barn, but it's over double the cost. And for this early application, there's really not a lot of disease already out there. And so we don't need the curative um, fungicide that's mixed into that other stuff. So uh, this is a preventative fungicide. It's only going to prevent disease from starting in the plant. It does not cure anything that is already there. So because we're so early, there's not hardly anything there already anyway. We're trying to prevent it from coming in. That's why we're using just the single component, the quadricide of it. It's a strobularin uh, fungicide and it, uh, uh, it will keep disease from coming into our corn and it's cheap. So the rate on it is six ounces per acre. Six ounces per acre. That's a very small amount. So five gallons will do 106 acres. So that's what we're gonna put in. Um, we've got another five gallons in that box down below there and we'll mix up another batch after we're done with this one. Hey, I'm ready to put my chemical in. We've got this inductor here on the side of the sprayer. Basically, we just pour the chemical in there and it sucks it into the uh, solution tank. As with most things I do, it's easier with two hands, but this one's not too bad. And then that uh, thing sticking up in the center there is a rinser. So we'll set our jug down on it, push down, and it sprays water inside the jug and rotates, rinses our jug out. Do it a couple of times, get the jug nice and clean. 
Okay, we're done with that. Now we just wait for our tank to get full. We're sitting right at about 900 gallons now. And then we'll go to the field. Okay, sprayer is full. It is a beautiful day. Let's go spray some corn. All right, we've 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 made it to the first field that I want to do. Uh, we got to get the booms unfolded here. And then we'll get our computer set up and go. The goal is to uh, run down as little corn as possible. And uh, you got a rookie sprayer driver here, so. There it goes. And we're off. So clearly I'm not getting the edge of the field. I'm really not worried about covering you know, end rows and the whole thing because I'm not spraying the whole thing. I'm only spraying kind of a, a portion out of the middle here. We're gonna leave a test. So we're gonna leave all this in the back behind this house lot uh, unsprayed. And uh, we're gonna do, I don't know, 30 or 40 acres out of the uh, 80 that's in this field. That way we've got something to compare it to this fall. This corn looks really good here though. I, looks really good took me a second to get the hang of the turns but we're cruising right along and man can you cover acres fast with this thing we've already done 20 acres and I haven't been out here for 10 minutes yet all right I did about 36 acres in this field I am going to jump across over to there by my seed warehouse and I'm gonna try and uh, make a couple of rounds through my plot. I think I'm gonna go across the rows so that it's even on all of them and I'm not running down a row in the plot. I definitely don't drive across the rows very often but that's what I did on my corn plot because I didn't want to be uh, unfairly running down one row of an entry or something and so if I just drive across all of them then it's still fair and uh, I really didn't run over that much corn anyway, so. Okay, that one is done. We've still got almost 600 gallons on the sprayer. So we're heading to a field uh, back there now. It's, um, it was the first field of corn that we planted. It looks pretty good. We're gonna spray it out back there and see how much we get covered. This corn's starting to get into that nitrogen that we put on, turn a nice dark green color. Beautiful. Looks really good. So the sprayer does not have RTK uh, GPS on it. It's uh, just SF1, which is accurate to eight to 10 inches, I guess. Um, but I think between that and the uh, fact that we're running on uh, stuff that we put that anhydrous on and the, the shank left the ground rough and uh, we're, it's really squirrely, we're dancing a lot. I don't know if you guys can see it wandering back and forth within the row. Some places it's not terrible, other places it really gets to moving and uh, it's a little hard to keep it off of these rows sometimes. The last thing I want to do is run down two rows of corn. Okay, tanks is empty. At least the monitor says the tank is empty. It didn't actually run dry, but we got to be within 10 gallons, I would say. So we're going to fold up and reload, head to the next field that's uh, farther up the road. Loading. Okay, so this is my irrigated field. There's 175 acres up here. We got enough to spray almost 100 or about 100. I am leaving a small strip along there just kind of as a check. And uh, this 50 acres or so on the north end of this field is corn on corn. So uh, that's, a, that's even more reason to spray it. This, uh, this replant corn is really too small to spray, but it's small and patchy and not a lot of area so I'm just going right over it so and the other thing is I've got my irrigation lanes in there like right on the end of our boom so we're gonna skip our pass over so we're not spraying those lanes because that does us no good here's our center lane that we came up here and hit with that S tine last week with the 4020 we got some beautiful corn up here look at that fantastic this stuff looks awesome Hopefully it keeps raining and we don't have to turn the irrigation on, but 
We've got it if we need it. All right, well we did I think 93 acres in this field. There's the map of what we covered. Got most of it, Got definitely got all the stuff that was corn on corn and some of the best looking stuff. There's a little bit on this end that did not get covered, but uh, that's okay. That's the whole point is to leave some check strips and stuff. So I am planning on spraying this field with another pass of fungicide uh, at tassel time, uh, which will have to be done with an airplane because we'll have irrigation pipe laying in here and all that good stuff. But um, so yeah, because of this being our irrigated, our really good field that I'm trying to push the heck out of it, uh, I do have a two pass plan fungicide for it. So anyway, we're folded up. We're heading back to the farm uh, onto the next project. All right, I am back at the farm. I'm sure you guys are all probably wondering what is going on with our anhydrous bar after yesterday's video, right? Well, here's the deal. Um, we've got somebody coming to look at it, or they came and looked at it last night. They're getting the pieces and parts that they need around uh, to cut those old hinges off, weld newer, heavier pipes on there, and reassemble everything. So doesn't look like it's gonna happen today. It may get started today, but probably be tomorrow before they get that fixed and up and running. So uh, we're okay because our corn that we're side dressing was small anyway, you know, it's that replant corn, most of it. So. Uh, I'm not super worried about it, but there is some rain coming this weekend. I would like to get this done uh, before that happens. So we'll see. Um, hopefully they get it fixed relatively quickly. But that gives us today to work on some other little odd jobs and stuff. Oh, a couple other things on that. Um, I know that the last two videos that I've put out have been our anhydrous bar breaking, right? Well, one, those shanks breaking have absolutely nothing to do with the rest of this. Those have been replaced before. They're not original it's not the manufacturer's fault or anything like that those are simply breaking because we hit rocks the fact that i was able to do the first half of our corn with only breaking one of them is unusual uh so three in one day it all averages out right it's just a matter of catching up i guess so it, it that's it's no fun but that's a reality of pulling a shank with a knife on it eight inches deep through our soil with rocks you're gonna break stuff so um uh, yeah, I'm not disappointed or upset with that at all. Uh, two, there may be some design flaws on our anhydrous bar. That center section is only five shanks wide, which leaves a lot of leverage out on the wing. Uh, if the center was seven and you moved that hinge out a little bit, it, it may take some stress off of those hinges and stuff. Maybe the hinges should have been heavier to start with, longer, thicker, whatever. Uh, I won't argue that there may be some design flaws, but it's also made it 11 years through our soil and our rocks. And yes, we've welded them up and fixed them and stuff, but it's not like, uh, it's not like this thing is just falling apart right from the beginning. So, um, uh, I, I, I'm really, I mean, yeah, it sucks, but it's not the end of the world here. So, uh, we're going to get it fixed up and we will be okay. Um. You know, the other side is still holding together for now. If, if this fix looks like it's going to work really well, we'll probably do that, but after we're done. So, um, it is what it is. You know, we're, we're, we're pulling shanks, 15 of them through the ground. Somebody uh, made a comment on yesterday's video about, uh, you know, getting the, that that bar is small or something that we should have bigger. Well, that's a 15 shank bar. They don't really make them much bigger than that. There may be some 17s around, but they're few and far between. And it takes every bit of power that our 335 horse tractor that we've got on that bar has to pull it. Um, it's not a disc style applicator. It's a shank and they they pull extremely hard and they're right, right, wrong, whatever conditions that you want to, however you want to say it. But, uh, it's, it's, we're rough on it. That thing takes a lot of abuse. It is not cheaply built. It is not made light or anything like that, that, that it just breaks all the time. It's just, we are really rough on it because of the conditions that we use it in and uh, things break. That's what happens. So we'll get it fixed up. We'll get the anhydrous done. Not the end of the world. All right. On to more projects for today. Dad unhooked the mower and took the loader off of our 7520 here. We have another little sprayer, and yeah, we'll explain that in a little bit too, uh, that we're gonna hook up because we've got some small spots that we need to patch in. The uh, sprayer that we're gonna hook up to this tractor has a PTO pump on it, and it has a 540 RPM PTO, not 1000. So we need to change this stub shaft around here, which involves pulling this snap ring out 
pull the shaft out, flip it around, and stick it back in there. Now I gotta get the snap ring back in, which I need two hands for. All right, that is back in. Um, basically, the difference is the, the splines are different on this, and um, when it's flipped around, uh, there's a hole in the end of the shaft. The other end of it doesn't have that, and it pushes a button in there, which changes the speed at which that PTO rotates, which, uh, yeah, different implements need it to rotate different speeds. Okay, well, I got this tractor ready to go. I put the GPS stuff in here. Um, that one, there's a receiver on top of the cab. I also have a monitor or a sprayer controller in here. We're going to go over and uh, hook up to that sprayer. I'll show you how it all works. All right, there it is. This is our uh, old, new old sprayer. It's a century sprayer, 500 gallon tank, 40 foot booms on it. Dad bought this two years ago. It was rusted out, piece of junk. We tore it all apart, painted the frame, painted the boom um, a year ago. Yeah, last spring while we were waiting for it to dry out because it was too wet. And uh, replumbed everything, new plumbing on the boom, new nozzle bodies, nozzles, all that good stuff. <sighs> Why? Why do we have a crappy little sprayer when we have that one? Well, we have a couple of fields that have some odd shaped muck holes in them that that big sprayer just doesn't do good in them. It, uh, it's soft, it's uneven, it's triangular shaped weird little pieces. And so we bought this basically to go into those little holes and uh, spray them whenever they need to be sprayed. Um, so that's what we're gonna do. There goes Dad now. He is off to spray post-emerge herbicide on beans. So we're starting with some of them first early planted beans that we had, uh, going in and spraying them to kill any weeds that are growing there now. All right. Well, we've got our little spray rig here uh, set up and uh, we're ready to put some water in it and some chemical, I guess. Uh, 500 gallon tank, I'm going to do some math. We're going to put 13 gallons to the acre on, so I'll have to see how many uh, acres that is and how much chemical we need. But uh, ah, pretty simple, straightforward little deal here. Oh, I should probably clean our filter out before we fill this up with uh, anything, just to start clean here. Okay, sorry I didn't film it while I was mixing, but uh, it goes fast when you only need 390 gallons of water, not even 400. So anyway, we got 400 gallons of water. It's enough to spray about 30 acres, 390 gallons. This 30 acres of 13 gallons to the acre. We put in seven and a half gallons of glyphosate, which is a quart to the acre rate. That's what we needed. I also put in our adjuvants and our water conditioning agent so that it will actually work, mostly. And we are ready to head to the field. Yeah. All right. This sprayer doesn't even have, doesn't, doesn't even unfold the booms. You gotta, you gotta get out and do it all by hand. Which is, are you kidding? Oh man. Put our pin back so we don't lose it. Fold this side out. Oh. Don't turn it on there, you'll kill their grass. All right. Okay. Here we go. We've got a uh, hydraulic raise and lower on our boom. We're going to get that set down pretty low because our beans are short. And I've got our GPS and everything set up. That's mostly for guidance, just to give me a straight line. It is going to make a map, but I don't really care about the coverage map all that much. It's nice to have, but it's not actually getting any data from the sprayer. This one up here will keep track of our uh, acres and gallons sprayed. And... Uh, basically controls everything so we got our PTO running I just got to keep enough RPMs to have reasonable pressure and then I've got another foot switch in here I should be able to click that and it will turn on let me get started and then I'll show you okay well 
back and forth through this low ground here that dad doesn't want to take the big sprayer in. See all this? Those are all giant ragweeds. That's what we're after. It's working pretty well. Uh, yeah, other than that I don't have auto steer and I have to turn and all that stuff. It's, yeah, go pay attention. My uh, sprayer does match the planter, 40 foot width. So if I can find the planter tracks, which is a little more difficult in soybeans than it is in corn, uh, I can follow those, but that's what my GPS is there to help me find it and stay on it. So, yeah, this won't take real long. Okay, see this yellowing in these beans and why this spot's really yellow? That is a manganese deficiency. And uh, that's another reason why we got this sprayer is because this muck, this high organic matter dirt, um, it always shows manganese deficiency in soybeans. And so we're going to uh, come back and spray those. We gotta mix up some different stuff. Probably won't be today. Might be the first of next week. Um, but we'll need to hit them two or three times throughout the year to keep enough manganese in them to actually produce beans. All right, I finished that uh, bean field that we were in there and now we're, uh, we're in a cornfield. We're actually in the cornfield that we side dressed yesterday before our bar fell apart. Um, most of the weeds out here are dead. However, there's this hole in the center that was too wet to even replant and it was too wet to spray and so there are some weeds over there that we're gonna go and get them while we can. Manual full boom suck. So then you end up doing stuff like this to get down the road. I just need to get to this field over here. I didn't want to have to fold up from right over there. Tank's empty. Time to fold it up. I got what I wanted to. That hole and the one on the other side of that hill over there. Yeah. We did what we needed to do, so we're gonna fold her up. We um, we need to do a little little tidying up when we get this home. That hose is hanging too low. We got to figure out a different way to do that. And this one here is falling off. We lost a zip tie. We got to fix. So anyway, fold her up. Let's go. I will have you note that on uh, the sprayer that I put together and put the nozzles on. We have all blue nozzles and blue nozzle caps. Granted, I only have one, one on each thing. I could put three on this one. I haven't had a need for any other nozzles yet. But they're all the same, at least. That's better. Nothing a few zip ties can't fix. Okay, I'm going to put this away. Okay, well, now that... Uh... Now that I'm done with that sprayer, guess what we get to do? Thought I was done with this too, but we've got to treat some beans. A customer called me that uh, his replant beans need replanted and oh, no good, but they got pounded with a rain right, right when they were finishing up replanting the first time and now our ground is hard and crusted and they're not coming. So uh, we're gonna run a couple boxes through the treater for him and hope that it's not too bad, but uh, uh, I feel bad for them, so at least uh, at least we got some seed around. If them beans were any bigger, they would not fit in those boxes. But anyway, got them treated. Just got to get lids on, and then we're done here. My next job requires this tractor. Okay, so as you guys know, our anhydrous bar broke yesterday. We have somebody trying to fix it, working on it, uh, but it doesn't sound like they're going to get to it until tomorrow afternoon. When we talked to them last night, it sounded like it would be done today. That didn't happen. Um, there is a chance of rain Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of next week. So it could potentially turn wet on us here. We have 300 acres of anhydrous or of nitrogen to put on yet. So not a lot. We are almost done. I would really like to get it done before it rains. So, I have been working all day to try and find an alternative way of putting our nitrogen on. Without our anhydrous bar. I think I figured something out. I'm going to let it remain uh, something I think I figured out until I know for sure that it's happening. Uh, but let me just say that you are going to want to tone in 
to tomorrow's video to see what we got. Uh, in preparation for what I think is going to happen, uh, we're taking this tractor to the field where our anhydrous bar is currently sitting, broken, and we're swapping it because I'm going to need that 8R and the computers and the power and everything else uh, for what I'm hoping happens here. So anyway, we're going to go swap tractors is all we're doing here and uh, yeah, tomorrow might be really exciting. All right, I made it down to the field where, uh, obviously, this thing broke. In case you didn't see yesterday's video, I'll show you what we're, uh, what our problem is. It's this hinge right here. Uh, yeah, a little work has been done since I was here last, but there's a pin that goes in here, and it is supposed to be through this part, this pipe, not, not down there. This whole thing was a pipe that cracked out. You can see the other half of it kind of in there. Obviously, uh, that side of the pipe broke again, or a second time. It, it was it was catastrophic failure. The one in the back also ripped. So those two hinges have both got to be fixed. It's uh, yeah, that's that's rough. So what we are going to do is put these stands down on both sides and uh, unhook it from this tractor, and then we're gonna hook it up to that one. And uh, I could have just unhooked it and left it set here, but once we get it back together, we thought we might need to be able to fold it and stuff to make sure everything's lined up right, everything's working right and stuff. So we uh, decided just to bring the other tractor over and uh, we'll do it that way. So I don't know, we've got the backhoe here in case we need to be able to chain it and lift this wing and help move it around, uh, support it, because I'm pretty sure if you cut that piece right there, it will drop and uh, that'd be no good so it is almost separated phil took the hoses off from the distributor here and uh, the only thing that's basically holding it together is well not holding it together but keeping it together this hoses that cylinder arm and that pin and if you take those apart it will that whole wing will come off so they can get in there to uh weld it we're gonna have to cut this whole thing off and weld a new pipe in there um yeah so the guy that uh, does the welding and stuff was was working on it. He was finding new pipes. I guess the, he didn't have anything that was the right size, and it must be an odd size that you gotta they gotta get some pipe bored out to get uh, the right diameter. And uh, yeah, it'll be better than new when we get it put back together. But it's gonna take a day or two here. We're also gonna check this side over. There's no cracks currently. Um, that one there we've actually welded uh, another half a pipe on top of uh, the one that was there because it was cracked and, and that really helps strengthen it so we may do the same on this one although I'm kind of the opinion that we should just finish and then cut the whole thing off and put a new one on uh, once we are done and we don't we have time but I don't know the whole bar is things are worn I mean this we've had this thing for 11 years it's it's not new anymore and uh, there's a lot of wear on more than just the frame even like these arms here have a lot of play in them and it's things yeah things wear <laughs> that's just what happens like I said earlier our ground is hard it is not very forgiving and uh, we're not intentionally rough on stuff just to be rough but it's hard pulling through our clay and our rocks and everything else. And this equipment, especially this anhydrous bar, takes a lot of abuse. So it is what it is. We'll uh, we'll get her fixed up and we're gonna figure out how to finish the rest of our nitrogen here quickly. Okay, I got these swapped. We'll leave her right there for them to work on. Heading back to the farm with the ADAR. At least this tractor goes faster than 8300. 23 mile an hour. That's about all she's got going down the road. This one will do 31. Okay guys, got the tractor back to the farm here. I am done for tonight. It's after 7 o'clock so it's time for me to go home. Um, you do not want to miss tomorrow's video. I'm telling you, you don't want to miss it. In fact, it may be so good if things are going well, I might even do a live stream tomorrow, which would be later this afternoon. I have no idea. That may or may not happen, but if things are going well and I think I can, I will. Um, 
have a great night. Uh, we got a little spraying done today and some few odd jobs. I wish I was side dressing, but no good. Um, so we'll see how tomorrow goes. It's going to be fun. I do know that. And uh, yeah, questions, comments, leave them down below. Hit the thumbs up button for me, please. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I would really appreciate it. Have a good night, guys. We'll see you tomorrow. Make sure you're back.